have it? Guts. Uh, yeah. Come on. Do you do 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 you have it? Guts. Oh my From god. That's right, guys. <laughs> do you remember this? Just imagine yourself going through all of these bushes and all this greenery. And then you came out. And all of a sudden you see this giant ass temple. That's right, guys. If you don't recognize the music, we are going to be talking about the show, Legends of the Hidden Temple. <laughs> oh, my foam mountain with different color lights on it that correspond to the shirts that the kids were wearing. And you had to hit these lights going up the mountain as you climb. And then they would drop down these foam rocks that would hit you. And you'd be like, oh, my God, I can't get up the damn mountain. And um, you had to get. Yo, 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 guys, welcome to the Do You Recall podcast, a podcast that says the shows back in the day got you through your day. And on today's podcast, I'm taking you back to the 90s. Why? Because that was the best damn time frame there was, <laughs> especially for family fun game shows. And I'm talking about two today on the podcast. And the first one is, do you recall, hold on. Do, do you have it? Uh. Do, 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 do you have it? Guts. Uh, yeah. Come on. Do you do 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 you have it? Guts. Oh my god. That's right, guys. <laughs> yes, that's where we're going with this today, man. I am talking about the show Nickelodeon's Guts. Do 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 you have it? <laughs> Guts was literally Basically, Kid Ninja Warriors. That's pretty much what it was. It was Kid Ninja Warriors. They had to go through these whole entire obstacle courses that they made up, and it was great. They had anywhere from middle school up to high school, and it was a show that had three kids on it, you know, and they just competed in fun, cool competitions, and it was really fun. And I remember one of my favorite games watching was, I believe it was called, like, it, it was like zero gravity or something like that. Basically, they would run across the wall. Do you remember this? When they used to run across this wall and then jump over these little hurdles through it, and you had to get the best time. That's how you got the most points, by getting the best time. And that was one of my favorite games they played on that show. One of my other favorite games on that show was uh, when they used to do like to have the bungee down and jump and shoot a Nerf gun. This is back when you had to have Nerf gun skills, you know what I'm saying? And and jump and had to hit the target with that with those darts. Do you remember this? Do y'all recall this in the in the show Guts? It was such a fun, impactful game where you could compete in silliness. Like it was just so fun. The whole family could enjoy. I remember sitting down watching this with my friends like, "Yo, we got to watch Guts. Like it's about to go down." Guts pretty much lasted from 1992 to 1995, and it was hosted by Michael Marley. Um, he's an actor and obviously a host, and he's hosted a lot of different uh, Nickelodeon shows. And, you know, so three kids would compete, and they would just go toe-to-toe and see who was the best at doing these dumb, fun, interactive games. And I loved it. I loved it. And um, at the end of each episode, they had to go through the big fake mountain. Do you remember this? Do you recall the big fake mountain? Okay. Do you remember what the mountain was called? Do you? I'm going to kill the name. If you remember right now, comment. <laughs> but if you don't remember right now, it was called the uh, Agro Craig. Agro Craig. I think I'm saying that right. And it was this giant fake foam mountain with different color lights on it that correspond to the shirts that the kids were wearing and you had to hit these lights going up the mountain as you climb and then they would drop down these foam rocks that would hit you and you'd be like oh my god I can't get up the damn mountain and um, you had to get to the best time and the person usually who got to the top of the mountain got the most points obviously and then if they got most points throughout the course of the show you won, and you had fun little prizes that you would win along the way, which was so damn dope. They did water games. They did aerial games. They did all kind of different things that you're like, who, who would do this? Like, who would, I would do that. Like, I wanted to be on Nickelodeon Guts so bad. And it was like, do you have – like, yeah, of course I got the guts to do that. Like, I'll do that. 
Because remember when you were growing up in middle school, you would do stuff, dumb stuff like at lunchtime or at recess, and you was like, hey, guys, we're going to run around the school, but you got to go through this uh, you got to go through this play set and then you got to go through this tunnel and you got to make a wrap around this and then, but you got to do it in the best time. You, know, you would do stuff like that. If you didn't do that in middle school, you didn't live. I'm sorry to tell you that. Uh, <laughs> but Nickelodeon's Guts was a show that I very much did like. And um, it, it it was like, it you just had to, you just had to see it to believe it. <laughs> I think kids nowadays would very much appreciate this show because it's something they can do now. There's something they can train for now. I mean, imagine if we had American Ninja Warriors and Nickelodeon's guts going on at the same time. Like there's, you know, the marketing for that. Like you have the adult show, then you have the kids show or very much whatever, how you want to do it. And I thought it'd be a fun time because a lot of people like American Ninja Warriors, you know what I'm saying? But they can't compete because they're not adults or because simple fact of there there are really super dangerous things to do and it's a lot of upper body strength and all this stuff and this was so cool because what I loved about it too was they always had help like you know they didn't just let you struggle like they let you do it for a second and then they will help you now especially a lot of stuff was on like bungee cord type stuff like with professional uh how you, what do you call them professional stuntmen there you go professional stuntmen that would help them out during the course of the show and if they couldn't do it, they would, you know, motivate them. And it was just a cool, fun environment show. Like, you just cheered on your team. And, you know, and you you just sit there and, and just like, go, do that. No, don't do that. No, no, do this. Oh, man, you missed it. Okay, you only got much more time left. And that was a great show. I mean, come on. Do you recall Nickelodeon's guts? It was just like that. Yes, I know y'all do. Oh, Yes. Bulletproof Blue. There it is. I just wanted to play a little clip of that because I thought it was pretty funny. And they always had the little nicknames, which was pretty cool, too. You got, like, a little nickname in the middle of your name, which was dope. And they used to have this thing like, hey, man, spill your guts. And then they would just give you, like, a little uh, bio of themselves and, like, fun facts about them, which was dope. You know what I mean? Like, I really much enjoyed this. I think this would be a cool fundraiser for, like, rivalry schools to do, too. Like, hey, if your school wins this, you know, if you competed in guts and these three schools do it, um, your school can win, you know, computers. I don't know. Something like that. But I think that would be fucking interesting to do. But Nickelodeon guts. And then the main prize that you got if you won the whole entire thing was not only the gold medal that said Nickelodeon guts on it, you got the giant ass piece of the mountain. <laughs> this giant ass piece of the mountain that looked like, you know, a piece of glass, but it wasn't glass. It was supposed to be from that mountain, but obviously it wasn't. But I mean, still. And I, I need to find that. I need to really find that giant freaking trophy. And that'd be dope. I want to let people actually take that home. Or if it was just like, Hey, just for the picture, you know what I mean? Or people actually took that home. Um, if you know anybody that has it, let me know. Comment down below. I would love to hear about that. Or um, just let me know, DM me or whatever, whatnot. But that would be great to see if people actually actually have that damn thing because I thought that would be kind of something cool to have, man. So oh, do you recall Nickelodeon's guts? <laughs> man, oh, man, oh, man. Oh, okay. Well, number two of the shows that I wanted to bring up today, and this by far was probably one of my favorites, if not my, no, I'm going to say it. it was, it was my favorite Nickelodeon game show. And I'm actually wearing the t-shirt. You can't really see it too, too much, but you can see the little maze. You can see the kind of face right here. If you zoom in, just look real carefully. And uh, if you don't know what it is that I am currently wearing, here's a little clue. Hold on. Do you remember this? Just imagine yourself going through all of these bushes and all this greenery. And then you came out. And all of a sudden, you see this giant ass temple. That's right, guys. If you don't recognize the music, we are going to be talking about the show. Legends of the Hidden Temple. <laughs> oh my God! If you don't remember this show, something is absolutely wrong with you, man. So, Legend of the Hidden Temple was a show like no other show to me. 
it literally was an action adventure game show for kids. That's literally what it was. It was an action adventure game show for kids. And the best part about this is everybody had a fair shake. You had like, I think it was six different teams to start. I think it was six different teams to start. Like I couldn't go through all of them, but they, I know you had like, you had the snakes, you had the monkeys, um, you had, um, oh my God, the, uh, the, 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 the parrot, the parrot, the parrots. Uh, oh my God, I'm okay. I can't, I can't think of the rest of them right now, but there were at least by, I think six or seven of them that started the game, uh, uh, teams. And then you like, you had to like race across the water on a relay and the team that got there first, the first four teams that got there went on to the next step. And the next step to me was very interesting. It was to the knowledge steps. Now the knowledge steps were pretty much is the giant mountain, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, the giant temple would talk to you. And the temple will tell you a story. And the whole thing is you had to listen to the clues in the story because when he was done, he would ask you questions. And if you knew the answer, you would stop down on the ground on the steps and then you would answer the question as quickly as you could. And you had to keep on out, keep on going down to the steps until the last two teams emerged. And I thought that was so cool because it gave you an educational uh, part of the show that you and it was real facts it was real stuff i learned about uh you know um i mean like emil Earhart. i think i learned about her on that show um i learned about you know somewhat of mayan culture um just different things on the show that was great facts i thought and it was a great way to learn something and have fun at the same time and listening skills were very important on that particular part and then after the two teams that got to the bottom of the steps they would do the like kind of like olympic games the mayan games where they were complete against each other and these different games were so damn cool they had like a teeter-totter where one team would go up and had to put down the the stone circles down the pole and the other person would go up but they had to work together and it was a very much work together type show um and i love that about it like and it was building commodity but whether they be in there were two friends, there were brother and sister, two brothers, or whatever the way, whatever the case may be. And they always had stunt people with them, so you knew it was safe. And they had people motivate them during the whole entire time. And the host. Now, let me tell you about this host. Now, I, I forgot the host name. I know it's bad. I should be saying the host name. But I thought, I didn't think he did that good of a job. Like, <laughs> like Michael Miley did a way better job on the show, being interesting and all that stuff. But he, to me, he was so dry, the host. And I, I probably will... If he listens to this, don't don't kill me, bro. I'm just saying, like, he could have did a lot better job than that. Maybe because I want that job. I could have did a better job at that. Like, I think I could have did a better job at that. You know what I mean? Like, there was a part of one part that I remember on the show where he had lost one of the – he's like, I can't find <laughs> the little the little stone circle things they used to give him, like the medallions. They gave him these medallions. And that was your life when you had to go through the actual temple. Now, fast forward, we get to the damn temple. Now, the cool thing about the temple was – it was a giant maze and it had all different kind of like trap doors inside the maze. And you had to either push something or you had to put something together or you had to get a key to unlock one of these doors. And, you know, you had to, and he was on a time frame. There was a three minute time frame to do a whole entire thing because there was one piece that you had to get. And it was always in different parts of, of the maze so it's like hey this part's in the swamp this part's in the dungeon this part so you know whether it was like a bowl and it's like okay this bowl is a mayan bowl whatever you have to get to this particular bowl before the time runs out so you had to go through this giant maze you had to use your wits you had to use you know um agility you had to use it was very much conditioning because you can get tired in three minutes and Throughout the course of you going through the maze, you had the Mayan soldiers or the, the keepers of the temple, as you might want to say, that would surprise you in random parts of this particular maze temple. And if you had a medallion, you could give it to them. That was like your life. And then you can continue on. But once you had ran out of the medallions, then they could take you out of the temple. And then the next person, your partner, would go and just try to go through that whole entire thing and try to get to whatever the uh, finished thing you had to get to bring out of the castle. I mean, bring out of the uh, temple. 
And it was fun, like, trying to cheer them on. Like, you saw kids get frustrated because, like, no, put it. They couldn't. They didn't know where to put certain items together. Speaking of putting items together, do you recall the damn silver three-piece monkey? Like, do (laughs) do y'all remember that? Do you remember when people were just, like, having a problem putting together a three-piece freaking monkey? Like, I'm pretty sure there was a briefing before the game with the kids. Like, it's like, yo, guys, you know, it's only three pieces. (laughs) It's like you got to turn the face around. You got to push it all the way down to unlock the door and all this good stuff. And I remember people just get stumped on that, like stumped on that so much. And it's like if you look, you got to watch the show before you go on the show, right? So you, if you watch the show enough times, you'd be like, okay, I know if I'm going to this room, I got to find the key. I got to undo these damn stones, get the key, try to fit it in one of these parts. And then the doors will open and I'll go. And the thing that was scary, though, was the fact that there was these damn, you know, Mayan soldiers in there. You didn't know where they were. They came out of nowhere. So I'm pretty sure you had to, like, sign a waiver, like, don't get scared. <laughs> don't hit these guys because they're just doing their job. You know what I mean? And that it was scary sometimes when they pop, oh, shit, no, they got them. Oh, man, it's only 30 seconds left. Can they do it? And so it was one of those things you had and you had to grab it and get out of the freaking temple all in three minutes i'm like i used to think that was not enough time to get through the damn maze but hey you know people did it and uh, if you did you beat it and you won like a giant prize which sometimes it was a trip you know sometimes back then it was like backpacks uh lotion i don't know it was like all kind of random things and uh it was a really cool thing but do you recall the show legends of the hidden temple oh my god the physical strength that you had to have in that show was um was uh so excuse me the physical strength you had to have in that show was ridiculous and you just had to have knowledge i just love it it combined everything you had to have knowledge you had to have the physical capability to do something and also you just you know had to be you know quick on your feet you know a lot of improv skills right here so it was really a show ahead of its time and i haven't found another show like that for kids where a you're learning something and you participate in a fun cool game and if the game actually like either got you tired, you know, you had to be physically in shape and all this stuff. And it was just a fun game to watch and be a part of because like you are sitting yourself there like, you know, rooting on a team because, OK, they can come back from behind or they can do this or, oh, my God, like, you know, listen to the questions when the when the temple guy is talking to you and you're like, oh, I know the answer to that stomp on the ground. Oh, no, that's not the answer. Oh, oh I wonder if they're going to get it and then just keep on going. So I can just imagine how much teachers probably enjoyed this. So um, right now, I just want to say thank you guys for tuning in to the Do You Recall podcast. The podcast that says the shows back in the day got you through the day. So I want to say thank you. Click down below. Subscribe to the channel. I got my phone going off in the background. Don't know who's calling me right now because I'm freaking recording right now. But it's typically okay. So what I want to say once again, guys, welcome to the legends of the hidden temple and do 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 you have it guts do 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 you have it guts <laughs> i see you when i see you peace